We are going to start the proceedings with a poem by the celebrated Nigerian spoken word and performance poetry artist and award-winning author, Mr. D.K. Chukwumarije. D.K., the stage is yours. I come to you this morning to speak of our shared history. It is the history of five million people taken from Africa to the Caribbean in chains, but you see, you can bind the hands and feet of men and women, but you cannot bind their hearts. You cannot bind the memories of a people, their memories of those African songs their mothers once comforted them with. The memories of those foods of yam, of okra, that once nourished their bodies. Memories of words, of those native African words by which they once mobilized themselves. Like kai so, that rallying cry to follow, to come along, to stay together. Kai so, thrown overboard into the black Atlantic, it refused to perish. Kai so, choosing instead to reincarnate here in the Caribbean as Calypso. Like this, the candle of defiance was never snuffed out in the soul of the African slave, and so you fought with song, you fought with dance, you fought with bamboo sticks, you fought with a steel pan, you fought with cambole, you fought with carnival. It was not just Wilberforce, no, it was Haiti breaking out in revolution. It was Busa troubling Barbados. It was that rebellion at Demerara. These were the things that demonstrated to empire that slavery was not sustainable, that the African would not be kept on her knees. It was the Caribbean bent but on bow that inspired the poetry of resistance for Claude Mackay said, we will not die like hogs. And Sam Sharp said, I will rather die on the gallows than spend my life in slavery. And Antonio Macio said, this revolution has no color. And Marcos Gavi said, emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. Yes, it was that Trinidadian, Henry Sylvester Williams, it was he who called that first Pan-African Congress. It was Caribbeans like Edward Blyden and George Padmore and Claudia Jones that helped raise that consciousness that lingers till this day. That if the racial inequalities upon which this modern world was built was ever to be truly dismantled, then Africans and those of African descent must come together to understand that the bonds that connect us all to that continent can never be broken that we are one people, scarred by one trauma, nailed to one cross, followed by one stigma, and our voices will not be heard until we project them together. To know that the cultural distance between Bridgetown and Lagos is not as vast as the ocean that stands between us. That underneath the differences between pidgin and patois, between anglophone and francophone, between Yoruba and Creole, we share a past. A past in which a young girl sits crying in the night because on that day her brother went into the forest and did not come back. And when she followed his footprints through jungle and valley, when she followed his footprints, they ended at the West African coast. They ended at the edge of the Atlantic Ocean. I am her descendant. I need not need a visa to come find you. You are his descendant. You should not need a visa to come home. So imagine. Imagine a world where there are direct flights between Dominica and Dakar, where there are exchange programs so students from the University of the West Indies can come and study at the University of Onsoka. And students from Onsoka can experience what it was for those Africans like Jaja, like Behanzen that were captured by the colonials and exiled to the Caribbean. Imagine a world where this history is alive 
where the sacrifice of Cuba in Angola is immortalized in memory, never forgotten in storytelling. Imagine a world where Africa's biggest export to the Caribbean is no longer slaves. A world where we trade, where we talk, where the Nigerian Naira shakes hands with the Bayesian dollar, and a Trinidadian poet can fly into Accra for a gig on Friday evening and be back home by Sunday. Imagine a world where we understand that Deo, Deo, daylight come and me one go home. Imagine a world where we understand that this call and response is Calypsonian, that Calypsonian is African, that the polyrhythmic heart of modern black culture beats to the African drum. Imagine a world where we know that this is one culture, that we are one people cut from one cloth, seen in one light. Imagine a world where we know this. Ah, well, my brothers and sisters, today I saw a mysterious thing, a thing that vexed me to my very soul. I saw the black man dressed as a king, but crouching in the shadows with a begging bowl. His children were starving in fields of cassava, Dying of diseases the Palm Canal can cure. Homeless in a land of rock and timber. Why are you here? He said, I am poor. Today I saw a mysterious thing. A wonder so great I cannot tell it. I saw the black man dressed as a king but lying in the dust crying at my feet. His legs were sturdy like the palm tree. His oceans were rich and teeming with game. His muscles, they rippled like the proud Zambezi. I told him, get up. But he said, I am lame. Today, I saw a mysterious thing. So shocking, I have no words to say. I saw the black man dressed as a king, but standing like the lost by the highway. He huddled in a cage that had no gates. He could see where the keys to his chains were kept. He stood in clamps, but they had no weight. Why are you here? He said, I am trapped. Today, I saw a mysterious thing. Uh, how can I tell such a horrible story? I saw the black man dressed as a king, but sharing a sleeping mat with poverty. His poverty was a fat man with a bulging stomach lying on his back beside a pot full of treasure. This awareness was all that he lacked, that he could get up and reimagine his own future. Thank you.